And this is going to be the first uh, of a number of videos that we're going to be just doing ad hoc. We're just going to go through the Head for C together. Um, I just want to say welcome and Merry Christmas and all that stuff. Happy holidays. This is a cognac glass. I'm drinking brandy this morning or this evening. Mm. And what a fitting thing to do. Um, before all the people get, get in here, let me just tell anybody who's just starting out with these videos, because I am going to put this in a category on, on Twitch and YouTube, that do not expect these to be fast. We are not going to be giving you a quick, 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 just do this, do this. We are all going to be working through uh, the Head First C book together and, and making mistakes and screwing around. So it's going to take a long time. We're going to be making jokes. Um, uh, I will show you the calendar real quick. So here's, so this is one of a number of plant community courses that I'm going to be doing over 2022, kind of in, you know, setting up the goals for 2022. Uh, we will have the May the 4th, um, the May the 4th boost will probably be uh, becoming an autodidact. And then we'll do the whole cycle throughout the whole year. And hopefully we can get through the whole thing in one year. If we can't, you know, fine. But uh, I don't, you know, we're supposed to be doing goody, 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 goody gig here. Eh, you know, I don't know about that. I I don't know if, how these are going to work out. We just know that we want to do the C one. So uh, we've been wanting to work through the head for C book for some time. Uh, we'll talk about, you know, why and when and how and all that uh, to work through it. We are also working from this calendar. So um, and this is the calendar that has uh, what I call the C boost on it. Uh, I am still kind of working out the details here. We, we did have an AMA time from, from eight to eight 30. Uh, I think we're probably going to do a longer AMA and news coffee time in the morning. This is literally me just waking up. Uh, so if you're, if you're tuning in for the first time and you didn't see this stuff before, uh, I just wanted you to know this, this is the schedule you can read my about and read all about, I need to clean all that up. But, um, but this particular stuff is, uh, is on my game dev and see, you just sent my arm. Yeah, um, and we are going to be uh, the CBOOS. I, I don't know whether to just jump right in or not. I think what we'll probably do is have an AMA uh, session before this so we can just kind of get going. But I don't even know if we really need that. People have been asking me, well, when can we ask questions and stuff? And I'm like, you know, if it's, if it's related to C, ask it during the C time. Uh, otherwise, you know, there's, you can ask it up here in this time. Uh, and then we have the Sundays for AMA time as well. Uh, so I don't know if we need another nightly AMA at 8 o'clock. Um, the reason I'm saying that is because I don't necessarily want to stop and start the stream all over again, you know, every time. Um, and and what to do with the VOD. I want to, I, I want to like get on and like jump right into the C stuff. So um, I, I don't know. I don't know what that's going to look like. Uh, we, I just don't, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> basic bros yes uh so i mean i don't know i i don't want to overly spend time on this so we're so technically not supposed to be starting to like 30 but i have a feeling we're gonna i'm just gonna start right at eight uh because i i feel i don't know i just i feel better about that if we need to do an ama we'll push the ama up earlier and uh we'll have it ahead of that so um again so the c boost is going to be it's just gonna be an hour. We're not gonna we're not gonna overly stress about this. We're just gonna work through the book as fast as we can, um, and I'm only gonna work on this during this time. and And I have never worked through the book. I've I've read through the whole thing, but I haven't actually done any of the work in the book. So you're gonna see me making a ton of mistakes uh, because I haven't done any C in 15 years. Uh, the last C I wrote was a a massive fork bomb uh, that I was paid to make on purpose by IBM to test uh, some some orchestration software. Um, and it was fun. It was really fun. So, and this the book that we're going to be reading from is is basically designed to to uh, to teach you in a fun way. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and get that. Let's go through, let's go through that really quick. Um, I, I'm trying to decide whether we should actually make like a guide for what we worked on, but I don't think that's a good idea. I think I think we should just. I, I don't I don't want to get too too much involved with like writing all the notes and all that shit because we won't do anything. I'll, I'll just be doing all the editing and updating and stuff like that. So uh, every night at eight, every night at eight, we're going to be doing this. Um, 
And yeah, recovery right now. They need to know things that sometimes think seg fault, and that's okay. Absolutely. Seg faulting is fine. We're going to talk about possibly doing this development and the C project inside of a container. Um, I don't know if if the end projects are going to be able to be done in a container. Um, and I I don't know. I, I, I actually want to talk about that. Again, this, again, this, this is very organic, so we're going to be talking and making decisions as we go. And every year we'll do something different. We'll do the same material, but we'll do something different and, and make, make adjustments. So, so the first thing I want to do is set up the environment and, and talk about the book. So the book, the book we're going to be doing, and by the way, you know, you're, you're free to say anything you want to hear as long as it's within reason, but remember it's going to be saved for time and eternity, uh, for everybody to read. So, uh, if you don't know how to, you got to have a Linux terminal. Okay. You, you have to have a Linux terminal. And if you haven't got that set up already, uh, go watch the boost and I'm going to give that, give her a boost, go watch the boost and get through day, uh, 42 or whatever on that. And that will help you set up uh, a command line environment where you can, you can write code. Uh, I have a feeling that the, that at the end of the C book and, and actually we can open up right now, uh, and for C, I have a feeling that at the end of the C book, let's go to the end that they're going to be doing, when they do the games and stuff. They start to use the graphic engine, which means, you know, we're going to have to port forward the X11, uh, or whatever we're going to do at that moment. Hey, welcome. Thank you for the follow. So we're going to go down here and we'll go all the way to the end. Is it open GL? Do you know the C lab at Blasteroids? Okay. So this is, uh, so this, this is a, the, this is the most fun activity in the whole book. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to doing it because I was a huge Asteroids fan as a kid. Uh, and, and I, we're going to actually make a, a game called Asteroids eventually. Um, I, is it, is it C, is it X11? I don't know. Let's go look. This slide gives you a spec that describes a program for you to build using knowledge you've gained over the past last few chapters. I mean, this is chapter like 13 or 12 or some shit. It's like, you've already learned a lot of C at this point. Right. Um, but I, I want to go jump ahead because I know this, this project is here and I don't know, uh, if this would work in Docker, I do know that you can do graphics games in Docker. You just have to port forward to X11 sockets, but that's not a beginner thing to do, but it's, it's not hard either. Um, so you, we could learn that. So here's the game they want us to make, uh, using, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's just SDL. Um, so this, they actually they don't even tell you how to do it. They tell you what to do and they give you an outline on how to do it. And if you want the answers, you have to go to their website and they have uh, all the answers there. I actually like that. I like that they don't give you all the things to type in. People just end up typing it in, not learning anything. So you have to figure it out. You have to actually figure out how to write it. It's going to be really fun. It's a, I, in fact, that's one of the things I like about the Head Force approach is that it's like really, it's really focused on figuring shit out. You know, it's focused on, 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 on all of that. Um, and so let's do that. Um, I'm actually going to be playing a little bit of music during the live sessions, but the music will not show up on the VODs on YouTube or in Twitch. So, uh, that kind of makes it fun. Uh, I don't have any music right now, but, but I just want to know that that's coming. I just realized I don't have any right now. All right. So your mission blast the asteroids without getting hit, blah, blah, blah. So we're going to be making these things. These are just line drawings. Uh, and what are we going to do? I think I probably had to put that there because it would have been asteroids otherwise. You see, these will be available on Twitch. Yes, it, they'll be available on Twitch, but, but on Twitch, they're not, they're not going to be saved. I'm not going to save them. They'll, they'll rotate out. They'll only be available on YouTube at the end. Uh, because I'm just going to export them to YouTube as is. I'm not even going to highlight or anything. I'm just going to send them as is. Um, so, you know, it's, it puts something to put on while you're working on it. If you want to, you can fast forward it and all that stuff. Uh, which means I have to wait, you know, a day in order to push it up to YouTube because because that's how they are. Um, Allegro is an open source game development library. That's what we're going to use. Allegro does use OpenGL. Uh, you decide to use 3D objects in OpenGL and handle most of the math. Through. All right. So we're going to be using, and this is a crazy ass thing, is that this uses an HTTP URL to SourceForge, which I know I've never heard of it either. So... I have no idea. We're going to, we're going to try it and see how it is. You know, I mean, how else can we try? But it looks fun. Maybe we can write our own C, you know, we can like fork. We should probably fork Allegro and put it and put it into GitHub. <laughs> Cause I fucking hate SourceForge. 
I mean, we really should do that. We should do that. That's probably be the first thing we need. You you may need CMake. When you build the code, you probably also need to install an extra code called CMake. CMake is a build tool that makes it a little easier to build C programs in different ways. And I don't want to use CMake. I want to use GNU Make. So, you know, we might, when we get to the game part right here, we might have to spend some time like hacking on that thing. Oh, you found a good one? You found, you found a good one. Nice, 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 nice. That's good. Let's put that in the notes. Um, well, it's in the show notes, so people will see it. Um, yeah. So, so that's, that's where we're headed, right? I want people to head where, see where we're headed. So when I say game development, I really mean it. Uh, I just want to say again, I've said this many times tonight, but Doom, the original first person shooter was written in C and CC. Uh, Quake also C. Uh, it wasn't until somebody told me Doom Eternal that things started to be C++ and I mean, there was a lot of C++ before that. So, you know, people say you can't do game development in C. Now it's like bullshit. Some of the best first games ever made were done in C. So we can, we can do this. Um, and this game uses like, oh my God, look at all this fun stuff you guys are posting. By the way, keep it coming. Keep it coming. That's what this community is about. It's about people finding stuff. When I say something or I'm missing something, you're backing me up, put something out there. Appreciate you doing that. Um, speaking of getting stuff and putting it out there, I've purchased two copies of Head for C. I have Head for C on, on Kindle and I have Head for C on, in paper. And so downloading the PDF didn't seem like an issue for me. I, I went ahead and did it. I'm going to let that be your decision. If you don't, if you don't want to download the PDF, that's up to you. Um, and it lets you, let you make, make, make that decision on your own. Um, so, but again, I, it's good. I see interest rates. A bunch of people are jumping in. They've got experience already. So they can like, you know, forge ahead and work on the game while we go through the basics of C. Um, I mean, it's, they, they've been coding C a lot already. So they can they can figure out some of the quirks for us in advance before we hit them. And and Aug's been making a, a, a lot of labs for different purposes. And that's going to be fun because we could, we could probably work some of this into lab format. A lab is, a, in our, is our word for... Uh, get a repo that has you know a set of requirements that and challenges for you to do and then a set of criteria to say you passed it and basically to just give you ideas about how to do stuff but not necessarily with any grades but possibly a, a an, an Occam's badge which is the open credential merit system that we've been working on creating to help people have fun and kind of kind of like an achievement system for for everybody um, so let's go back to the beginning Again, we only have an hour, so we're going to go from eight to nine, and we're already twenty minutes in. So let's see what we can do today. I'm going to make a bunch of assumptions about what you already know. Okay, so first of all, you need to already know GitHub and GitLab. If you don't know GitHub and GitLab, you know you probably want to do that. Uh, GitHub at least, and you should have a minimal uh, expertise with Git. I am going to be doing the commands. I'm going to talk you through the commands, but I'm not going to teach you Git right now. I'm also not going to teach you how to use the Linux command line and use Bash. We're not going to do that. That's covered elsewhere. As I said, we have a number of other um, things on that. So Zet Edit Courses, uh, and I told you that's in the boost, right? So the boost is, is going to cover this stuff. Um, you know what? Hey, Ancient, if you're going to be doing that, can you try to put Allegro in a? Can you put Allegro in a container and see if you can get it to port forward the X11 uh, ports and test the SDL stuff in it, the OpenGL stuff? That would be fantastic. That would be a, that would be a fun challenge for you probably. Do you know what I'm saying? The source code we're doing in public, yeah, it's been around for a while. So, I mean, that might really strike stress. So I know. By the way, if you don't know what I'm talking about, so there's a thing. I'll give you the search for this. So Jess. Frazzle, just Frazzle has as is very it's rather old, uh, Willy Wonka, um, containers. She, just Frazzle has runs her entire operating system her when she, at boot from containers, and she does a demonstration where she uses Docker containers to run Valve games, and she has rather involved Docker lines that she uses. But you can go watch this video, uh, if you if you want to. The reason I'm putting this out there right now is because the people who know C already or some they want to experiment a little bit in advance. Uh, Jess, Jess is amazing. <laughs> she's a little opinionated, but she's fun. And she's got this. Um, she, if you go fast forward here, she's got. This is her doing games. Um, she's got. She starts with the gears. This is running from a container. So what I'm trying to tell you is our asteroids game 
can run from a container. And I think the ultimate goal here should be to containerize our Blasteroids game. Because then you can put it up on Docker Hub and other people can play your Blasteroids game by doing Docker install Blasteroids or Docker run Blasteroids. Boom. It'll download it. It'll run it. It'll have all the SDL libraries in it. It'll just work, right? I think that's what our end goal should be. That's not what head for c has decided to do because they didn't have there's no idea of containers in there but in the boost that i put on so if you go do the boost uh you'll get familiar with containers in azure command line the, to linux so if you're on windows or mac you can you can get right into linux without having to do anything and and you can use containers and you can then leverage the stl libraries uh from within there so the reason i want to i really want to go this route and i'm really kind of getting married to this idea is because if you fuck anything up you can delete the cluster if you are there's probably going to be a dependency on OpenGL or something like that and if you if you try to install those things on your linux machine or on your windows or whatever you might fuck it up and i'm sorry i'm gonna swear i there's gonna be swearing in my i swear my stuff's mature i'm sorry but um so so but but here's what she does she's got she's running these are all this is this is all running from a container all of this stuff is running from a container and this is her playing a game from valve that she ran from a container uh yeah it, all of her commands to run her containers yes they're all there so the, the the goal i mean with the containerization being the way to go with docker being the way to go i think it's super important that we not just learn how to make a game but we learn how to containerize the game and to use docker f as we can create a a a common uh development container as we go this is a really common approach for software development today so today rather than have everybody have to all download and get their computers all synchronized uh they there's pair programming that people do across the internet which i don't particularly like because you have to have the internet to do any coding or you create a container and then you build a container the whole development team builds a container as they go and while they're building it up they say okay all of our dependencies are in the container and so if you want to do development on this project you do the development in the development container. And if somebody finds out that they need an extra library or something, they put it in there. So if you've done any Python virtual environment kind of thing, that's the idea, except for it's better, like way better, because you can do it for anything, not just Python. So the one thing that I want to take, I want to adapt. This is one of the reasons I don't like calling it the head for C thing, because we're going to, we're going to be adapting a lot as we go. And one of the first major adaptions adaptations we're going to make is we're going to build a, con a development container to build these games and things as we go it's going to be ephemeral it's going to be it's going to throw away our stuff if we don't save it somehow and it's going to do a bunch of shit that 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 our containers are supposed to do so this is going to be a container centric c development thing and and i'm also going to make a ton of assumptions about whether you know containers or not and if you don't know containers you need to go watch the boost and there's a, there's a beginner boost that goes through, you know, this stuff. And we use containers to get Linux access and install. It's pretty easy. Install Docker Desktop. I, I hate this proprietary. Oh, well. Install Docker Desktop. You know, pull down a Linux, a, a Linux image of your choice. You know, compute. Do whatever you want to do. That's really it. That's really it. You don't have to fuck around with, like, virtual machines. You don't have to install Linux on your hardware. You don't have to. You can do those things if you want. But you don't need to do that. This is one project, by the way, that you cannot do remotely. You cannot do this because you're going to need OpenGL and SDL and all that stuff. So you're going to have to do it locally. Another reason I'm really anti pair programming shit over the web because they're trying to develop on a project. But if you're doing something that's using local device drivers and, and libraries, you can't do it. So so I think this is going to be the best, the best path. Um, so the first step we have to do, besides getting the book, is set up our own development environment. All right, so I think we should spend the rest of the night tonight doing that. We have like half an hour to do that. And and again, I'm going to assume that you know Linux or you already have a containers on there. And, and I'm going to have to refresh my skills with Dockerfile. I'm not an absolute king at it. I, I have to look it up. And we have to set up a Git repo for this. So traditionally, when we do this, um, we set up. So I'm going to go into my GitHub directory. Uh, I organize my stuff so that I have a github.com uh, I have a, a pretty clean repos organization. Uh, I've talked about this in the boost, but 
uh, the, the reason for this is because I like to know, you know, what service I'm on. There's two or three or four services or source at GitLab, GitHub, whatever. Um, and I like to do this because there might be, I might have an artifacts Rob on GitLab. So I, I organize them all. I put them in a capital repo. And this is just a standard thing that I have. Uh, I've been doing it for years, but and it helps me organize everything. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to make um, uh, a Git repo for this. I'm going to use Git, the GitHub command line tool, which I'm not going to explain. This is something that's all from the boost. Uh, but I, I'll, I'll talk through it while I do it. So the first thing I'm going to do is make a directory for what we are building. Uh, and this is, this is a tricky one because, I mean, if you go back to the, if you go back to the, to the thing here, we're going to have multiple projects, right? So do we, so we have to make a decision. Do we go mono repo and do we have like a ton of stuff all over the place? Uh, it doesn't have X11 LM. So CMake build for that example, game failed. I just use package manager or GCC source. Nice. Ancient strengths. You're our. You're our like. You're our like scout. You're like. You're like ahead. You're like. You can be our scout to make sure the jungle doesn't isn't is isn't gonna send us off a cliff or something. <laughs> mm. Also, cheers. Um, so we're gonna do. Uh, the first thing we need to do is figure out how we're gonna. Are we gonna use a mono repo for all the projects in 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 head for C? Uh, which means that there's just one repo. You put everything in there. Uh, or are we going to do multiple individual repos for everything else? Well, my my first inclination is to start with a mono repo. And then if we run into a problem that we need to do that, uh, uh, <laughs> my relatively young eyes. Okay. People are giving me shit because we're doing C coding. They can't believe it. I've been talking about doing C coding because I want to do C coding. I just don't need it for my job. It's better than admin. I'm sorry. No offense to anybody doing admin, but I would much rather make Blasteroids than fucking admin. Sorry. Sorry. No offense, but cheers. <laughs> I think I'll have, I think I'll have a nice cup of tea or a very large brandy. Name that quote. Um, okay. So let's do this. I'm going mono repo people. So that means we're going to make, make their, uh, head first C uh, projects. How about that? All right, make a big up, big ass directory. So, and that, uh, we're gonna go in here. And what we're we gonna do in here? Well, we're gonna make it into a Git repo. Okay. So, let me make a readme for it. Oh, fuck. Did I spell that wrong? Yes. It's the brandy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, head first, uh, C projects repo. That's fine. And, and that's all. And that's all. Git init. And we're going to make it a Git repo. We're going to add a file. Uh, this is git add. I'll do the long form of the command since, since I've got shortcuts for everything, but I can't even remember. Git add dash a dot. That has everything recursively. And then, uh, git commit. And we say add uh, initial uh, readme.md. Harry Potter, you got it. <laughs> you win the prize. I wish I had points to give you. I do. I wish I had points. I don't have points to give you. So so what do we do now? We got this Git repo, right? Well, we need to put it someplace. So let's turn it into a Git repo on GitHub. GH repo create. And head for C projects. Same thing here. Um, Head uh, first, C uh, projects, and we'll make it public and post that. And do you have access to rights? Oh, that's because my SSA keys aren't working. Sorry. Give me a second. I need to run an application. I just rebooted earlier. Actually, Dota made me reboot. I need to open my key manager. Give me a sec here. I This is using an SSH key agent that runs without having your keys on disk anywhere. It's much safer to do it that way. Uh, but I, I have to reactivate my, um, I have to reactivate it. So, uh, I have to, I have to touch my Yubi key, which is hiding. I really have to get a cable for this Yubi key. It's at the back of my computer right now and it's a pain in the ass. Where are you? Where are you? There you are. Okay. Oh shit. Everyone reading database credentials. Uh, 
Um, all right, one more time. Damn it. <sighs> I haven't needed this stuff for a while. Cancel. All right, here we go. Ready? Open an existing database. Cancel. Uh huh. Okay. There we go. All right. So I'm probably going to take down that security notch. It doesn't need to be that high. That's some pretty high security they have going on there. I don't know if I need it. I don't. I don't know if I need it. But I use KeepSXC. I'm probably going to move a lot of my stuff to the pass uh, password manager and just keep things. I don't, I don't know. I feel uncomfortable having SSH keys in flat text on the system. I just always have. I don't like it. Um, even if they have passphrases on them, you know. That's what SSH agent does, by the way. SSH agent manages your passphrases, so it just keeps it running and, and, and cleans out memory so it can't be owned. Mm. So, add key to SSH agent. And here's how you test it. SSH get at github.com. That will tell you, hey, I know you. Goodbye. That means everything is good. Everything is good. Oh my God! You saw my password. I feel. I feel. <laughs> I feel exposed. I've been exposed. All right. So, um, what are we doing? We're watching Justice thing. Oh wow. Okay. Um, 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 what are we doing? Oh yeah. So, we're doing this. Gh. Did I? Did my thing fail? Right. So gh uh, repo. Create uh, head for C uh, projects public. Yes, already exists. I wonder if it went through. <coughs> I have a command called open. It just opens it. Oh, okay, it worked. That's weird. It worked anyway. All right, so I'm going to keep that there. Uh, now watch if I do open it detects if it's a git repo and opens it with uh, to the right spot. It's a it's a thing. Uh, do you want it? Here it is. That's my the command that does that. Uh, I'm gonna be sharing commands with the Twitch chat as I go, uh, just to let y'all know what you have, and also you can go read about it. Um, what else? This is all the command is in the command. It, it's actually written in Perl. I get shit up for writing this in Perl all the time, but it was so much easier. <laughs> I could probably port that to Bash at some point. But um, I like Bash I because I use it all the time. What are we doing here? So I need to do git push dash o, actually u, upstream. It's the same as dash dash upstream. Origin, and I have and I have main set as my default uh, in git. git point, I think git 1.22 or further as git 1.2. You can you can do that. Uh, uh, if you if you don't if you want to set main, which I recommend, it's just easier to type. Honest to God, that's the main reason. I I understand the other reasons, but that's the main reason I use it. So uh, dot get um, config. Yeah. So here's my get config. Uh, it's got a bunch. These are all the aliases I use for for gh and stuff. If you want to see them. This is all in my dot repos. Uh, this, this is all in my my dot uh, stuff. If you want to go look at all that, so again, I'm trying to since we're trying to do this more educationally, I'm going to tell you everything I do, and you can kind of go look at it and dig it apart. Um, uh, but the one the one I was going to tell you, so I GPG sign everything. Here's my default branch is main. So this is the setting you can put on there, and I'll make it make it all main some master. All right, um, status. We're good. We're good to go. In fact, if I open the repo now, why are you opening it up there? Head for C project. So where there we go, and you know nobody's there yet, but that's fine. It's a good place to put stuff. Close that up. Um, close this one up too. Adjust this thing. Um, and that's it. That's it. We we're ready to go. 
let's start coding. So since we're going to make this as a Docker uh, project, we have to think about this. What should we use? Now, there are already C containers for doing building of this kind of thing. One of them is called Conan the Container. And I kind of want to go look for it on Docker Hub. So uh, openhub.docker.com. I've used this a lot. It's called Conan the Container. And it's actually designed. Why am I not signed in? It's designed for C development. Conan IO, here we go. So GCC 8, GCC 7, uh, GCC 9. And it's got everything. It's got all the libraries and everything all set up in it. So I almost don't think we even need to write our own. We can just extend that one and then and then go from there. I feel like that's the right way to go. But um, again, I said we wanted to do containers here. So let's try that. Let's, let's read the book and see what they want us to use. Um, they they let's, let's just go straight into the book shall we i'm, I'm going to read every page of the book i'm going to read it very quickly but i'm going to read every page because i'm doing some vetting here as well uh we're going to be watching inverted stuff because i cannot stand other other than that the the head for c just in a nutshell the idea of net for c is to make it silly so you remember it which is a well-documented scientific way to remember things that's how people who do mnemonic competitions do it uh, with the memorized pi associated with a big crazy ass you know imaginary story in our head and so all of this silliness has actually got scientific basis to help you remember it. Uh, this section, we we're trying to bring in question, why did, so why did they put C in a book? Um, this book is for, do you already know how to program another language? Do you want to master C? Probably uh, answer is yes. You're looking for this. This is your book. We know what you're thinking. Can this be a serious C book? Yes. We know what your brain is thinking. Here's your brain. Your brain craves novelty. So you can read that whole section, but I, summer, I did a TLDR already on that. We think head first reader as a learner, uh, this is, you're trying to learn. So I love this. Uh, some of the principles from head first C, these are backed by science. Make it visual, make it conversational, personal, get to learn to think more deeply, get in learning the reader's attention and touch their emotions. I, this, I could not have more perfectly summarized my own learning principles from Skillstack over the last, since 2013. I've been doing this since that time. I've been making silly ass nine cat projects and, and waffles and bridge caper Python and uh, money Python and as silly as we can do it because it sticks. And I've had people come up later who are now in, you know, big ass colleges or, or crazy jobs that have told me one in particular said, I really appreciate your mnemonic mini projects that you did because it helped us memorize them. And remember, them. I had no idea about any of this. It just was intuitive to me to make it fun. So we would go watch a meme and then do it and then make it. And it stuck. It stuck because they could always associate that crazy fun thing that they, that they watched that video about that thing. Uh, we did badgers for loops, right? Badgers, badgers, badgers. And we're still going to do that, by the way. All that stuff is going into the other boosts. Uh, and I, I don't know if this is time to make a plug for it again, but we are going to be doing uh, another course. I'm calling it a course instead of a boost because it is a course. Can go, it's going to be linear. I don't like linear, but whatever. Um, we're going to learn Python and go the hard way. And, and that will be following along with a book, but it might also include some boost content from the challenge library. So that's another thing um, that we're going to be working. So this is, by the way, this is just all a continuation of what I was already doing at Skillstack. So I'm not, I'm not really, it's not really a departure for me from, from that. Um, let's go back to the book and see what kind of C we're going to be coding. Uh, if you have questions, by the way, along the way, just shoot them out, shoot them out. And there's no bad questions. Uh, I wonder how I can trick my brain into remembering stuff. This I'm not going to, metacognition is the whole thing. Read about it. Here's the way we did it. Um, do the exercises, write your own notes. You read, write, exercise. RWX, sound familiar? Do the exercises, X for exercise. Write your own notes, W for write. Read about it. Don't just stop and read, but you need to start there. Uh, are you wanting us to create your own fork? No. Just make your own. Look, this is this, you don't need forking at all, at all. You're just making a project. You just make your own project. You don't need to fork mine. You can come to mine and look at it. Every okay. So that's probably a good question. So, but if I'm going to quickly say this, if you do you think there's open jail? No, Repl it doesn't have it. Wait, it's not even worth mentioning. There, there are some online coding weapons you could use. You're going to need to do it locally on this one. Uh, what's that? It's not only called the Allegro libraries because they have like 50 separate ones. Yeah. So 
I have a feeling. Can you guys check and see if there's an Allegro library in GitHub? I mean, in, in Docker Hub? If there's not, we need to make one. We don't need it for the first lessons, but we're going to need it for the end. We're going to need to make a Docker image that has Allegro in it, all set up. And, 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 and as the final version, and then I, but I actually want to help people learn how to make their own containers to do this along the way. So we'll be learning how to make a container as well as learning how to make a game in C, uh, and learning C of course. I, I did want to stop here though. So read, write, exercise, that's RWX. And I did, I, that's why I'm so on board with, 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 with these guys, because the people who wrote this book really understand what I prioritize. And so talk about it out loud. God knows that's me, right? Write a lot of code. I just love it. I love, love, love it. And, and that's why we're doing it. Uh, there's not one. We're probably gonna have to make one. I think, yeah, we could be the first one to make it too. So this is cool. We, we can break a lot of ground here. Agent Trace, you want to, you want to learn containers. There you go. Go, 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 maybe, maybe build off the basis of the Docker file from like the Conan GCC one and then add all the Allegro shit in there and then call it Allegro and put it in your Docker hub. And then we'll just clone that. That's if you want, if you want it like a, you know, stretch you kind of project that will really help a lot of people. Yeah. It's a GitHub repo. I know what I'm saying is you could take that GitHub repo and you can put that GitHub repo and combine it into the build container for uh, the GCC version that we're using. And you could you could actually pull pull the one of the Conan containers. You could even steal a strip because it's all open source. You could combine the Allegro source with a Docker file there and put that Docker file with the Conan GCC source and we'll have a container that will be good to go. And then we'll put, it's probably, it probably doesn't have any SDL or OpenGL in it as well. We're gonna have to put that in there as well. The end result is going to be um, a head for C container that has everything for Allegro in it. And, 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 and it includes a readme that says, here's how to mount the X11 sockets so that you can use this container to make your games and run them. That would be phenomenal. And then, I mean, obviously you're going to be able, we're going to be compiling code uh, and the, the artifact of that is going to be able to run anywhere. You know what I mean? So at the end of the day, we're going to, we're going to be fine to have, you know, a single executable to run your game. Uh, we're going to have to put CMake and GNU make on there and all kinds of stuff. So that would be, that would be really fun. Uh, let me, let me move my, 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 my preview screen. It's like freaking me out here. Um, There we go. All right. Good. Good, 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 good. I'm super excited. So we still don't know what GCC we're versioning. I, I know we knew GCC. Read me. Uh, this is a learning experience, not a reference book. We deliberately stripped out everything that you might get in the way of learning whatever is worth at the point in this book. Uh, at the first time through, you will need to begin at the beginning because the book makes assumptions about where you are already. So the reason I picked this book again is because it's linear. And... Um, you know, learning isn't linear, but it makes you feel cozy. So, you know, we're going to go with that. Uh, and people are like, well, why are you using a book? Why aren't you doing some original shit? And I have done plenty of that. I don't need to do more of it. So I, I really want to vet this book and see how good it is. And I, I know it has a couple of errors in it already, uh, but they have an errata and we're going to be able to go through that. And I like, it be, I like it because it's something that I can refer people to. And it's fun, you know. So we assume you're new to C, but not to programming. So... This is my this is my assumption as well. If you haven't if you haven't programmed in Python, Bash, or JavaScript, uh, you're going to be in trouble because you should have already you should already know basic programming concepts like for loops and stuff like that. If you don't know those things, you can try it, but it's going to be a little bit harder. Uh, we're not going to go deep into you know what's the difference between recursion and iteration and blah blah blah. We're not going to do that. That's all in learning you know head first Python and Go, which is another course. Um, okay, so you need to install a C compiler on your computer. This is the stuff that we've been talking about, right? All of this stuff with, and they, 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 look at this. They want you to put MinGW on your computer. <laughs> no, don't do that. Don't do anything that they say here. Don't do this. You need to install C on your computer. The best way to get C on your computer is everything we talked about. Install Docker Desktop, install Docker Desktop, right? And then install uh, GCC. They didn't tell us what version of GCC. And then we're going to run the Conan container. All right, it's hands down the fastest way. We begin to teach some concepts in C, and then we start putting C in the work the right way. Uh, coding Ninja Master. Okay, the activities are not optional. Exercises, do not skip them. The redundancy is intentional. Repetition is the mother of learning. I love, gosh, I fucking 
love these people because you do code.org or code or code combat. I'm sorry, code.org or uh, free code camp. They don't put any redundancy in there at all. It's like you finish the challenge, you go on, you forget it immediately. So this intentional redundancy or layering of learning is really, really good. I really love that. Example or as lean as possible. Our readers tell us that we are frustrated the way through 2000 lines of example code looking for two lines they need to understand. <laughs> Most examples books are shown within the smallest possible context. So that part you're trying to learn is clear and simple. Don't expect all our examples to be robust. Uh, brain power exercises do not have, don't have answers. So the brain power answer, this is pretty big deal. Uh, create a Windows VM code for Windows running code in container done. And no, I didn't say any of that. Do not do that. Do not do that. Do not do that. Create Windows VM. No. no I tell you this options. Okay, I'm telling you the option I want you to do. And if you want to do your own thing, that's fine. You're your own master of your own destiny. Get Docker desktop on your machine and get ready to put a container on there to do your development in. The end. Uh, that that is consistent with what I've done in the boost. And if you've gone through the boost, you won't be lost. If you if you don't know what MinGW is, I don't care. You can go figure that out if you want. It's ancient technology that that you should, probably shouldn't get in, get involved with at this point. Hmm. I did. I did. Oh, you were joking. Okay. Um. So in some of the brain power exercises, you'll need to find hints to point in the right direction. I actually like that they do this. So they don't tell us anything about how to make Blastroids. We're going to be on our own and we're going to be struggling as a community group trying to make it, you know, like working through this project. I love that because all that failure and frustration is going to make you learn it and me learn it. So I'm looking forward to that. I, again, this is why I love the headfirst approach. Um, technical review team, some kick-ass C coders. Uh, they've been developing C for a long time. 20 years of consulting for Fortune 500 firms. Uh, likes to play piano, guitar, wife and three kids. I mean, these are good people writing this book. Uh, editor Brian Sawyer is awesome. The O'Reilly team. I mean, O'Reilly has always been kick-ass. They've always been really great. Now my friends and colleagues, uh, Brett McLaughlin, which is interesting. I think I recognize that name from somewhere. I don't know any of them personally. Uh, let's see. Safari books. Yeah, I'll go down here. Diving in. Don't you just love C? Comes in the lovely waters. Uh, I want to get inside a computer's head. So we are going to read all of this stuff because it talks, see, I've said this all the time, learning C, everybody says it's not just me, learning C helps you understand your computer. Uh, learning assembly helps you understand it better, but C is a little bit easier. In fact, I used to teach, have people learn C by coding microcontrollers because you understand the, the components a little bit better at the lower level, but we're just having fun here learning C, so this is a little bit different. Need to write high performance code for a new game, program an Arduino, or as I mentioned, Arduino is a microcontroller. It's like a little, you know, single board computer, SBC. Uh, or use the advanced third-party library in your iPhone app. If so, then C is here to help. C works at a much lower level than most other languages, lower than everything, including Rust. Um, so understanding C gives you a much better... Uh, it, they, Rust doesn't like to tell you this, but C is a thousand times faster than Rust. That's not an exact number, but it's way faster than Rust. Is it less safe than Rust? Yes, it allows you to be less safe. It doesn't. There's no safety net under you. You have to learn how to write code properly, and that's hard. And a lot of people don't learn that, and they fuck everything up, and the world gets owned. And that's why the Rust people want to do their thing. But learning C first, learning C first, and then learning Rust makes you even better because now you know or go even because now you've got a point of reference. What does it even mean to be unsafe code? Well, let me see if I can write some. And you can't even... Some, well, I guess you can turn on safe on. Anyway, C can help you better understand other languages as well. So dive in and grab a compiler and, and don't and, and soon you'll get started in no time. It is important to notice that this language needs a compiler. All right, so JavaScript and Python uh, don't need a compiler. They have a compiler. It's called a just-in-time compiler that just runs as soon as you run the code. It compiles it immediately to bytecode and then it runs it. Um, and sometimes it'll keep the cache the bytecode around and next time, so it's a little bit faster to start up. That's why those other interpreted languages are slower to start up because they have to compile it on the fly. And languages like Go and C and Rust don't have that. You do the compilation step, so it doesn't have to do it. And then you get an elf binary uh, like this. You get an elf binary like this that's uh, just a bunch of binary code, right? That just that goes straight into the computer's brain and runs. And it doesn't have to be 
it redirected, you know, like like this program that's got a shebang line and the computer sees these first two characters and goes, oh, this is, you need an interpreter here. Okay, I got you. And then it goes and finds this binary, the bin bash, uh, you know, actually, bin bash, you'll see is another elf binary, compiled C code, right? And so, so that's the binary code that's running. People run, you know, Python or Bash or Zshell or whatever. They're not running. They're not running that script. They're running the binary. If you actually list it, uh, if you list it in your process table, you'll see there's a ton of Bash code running. See, this is Bash, 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 right? But if I but if I run a program that is uh, a binary, you'll see the binary here because it's that that's the actual binary that's running. When you run an interpreted pr program. The, the interpreter is running and it does a compiling and everything for you. Uh, we're, we're, that's why it's so efficient because we're actually writing, we could write bash in C. Bash was written in C. So, you know, I, doesn't that give you a sense of power that you're learning a language that Linux itself was written in? I mean, come on. Doesn't it just like, just like make you excited? BSD, Linux, every operating system pretty much on the planet was written in C. And you're learning that language. I, I, there's no more. I think it's one of the most satisfying feelings in the world is to know that you can even read the source code. Not to mention the syscalls and all the things you do to track to trace a program. Those are all written in C. So I, I'm kind of supplementing what we're talking about here. But I really want you to get excited about learning this language because it's going to give you so much insight. And somebody, let me give you. Here's a hacker insight, right? Hackers are like, why do I need C? Well, let me. If you're going to debug a program, so let's say. Let's take any number of programs that are running right now. PS dash EF. Um, actually, let's do one. Let's let's just write. Um, I mean, let's write a simple Go program, okay? Uh, I should probably write it in C. I don't know how though. It's been so long. I I am so ashamed. I can't even write Hello World in C. Thank you for the follow offense. Um, in Rust, this is a funny joke. <laughs> I how do you write? Okay, I we'll we'll get there. I want to show you what a system call is. Just remind me later to tell you what a system call is. I want to, I'm trying to find a running program so that you can see like if if some program goes awry and starts doing shit that it's not supposed to. I used to do this for work at IBM. And you have to track what those programs are doing. Or if a program crashes and you have to track why did this thing crash, um, you have to be able to read C because the system calls of the Linux kernel are written in C. A system call is the communication that happens between the programs and the kernel uh, to make things happen on your computer. And as you can think of it as kind of a, a network. It's not, but you can think of it kind of as the you know communication going back and forth. And you can actually monitor that communication while it's happening. So next time you have a piece of program that's running and you're not sure if it's like phoning home and giving away your personal private information, you can actually put up an S trace on that thing and watch everything it does. And the language of what it is doing is C. So, so just, I mean, you might not think you need to learn C to make applications, but understanding how to read C and understand what a C function looks like and stuff like that, return values, all those things, that all comes into extreme play when you're trying to determine what things are doing and understand them, when you're looking at core dumps and all kinds of stuff. So what I'm trying to tell you is there is a ton of shit out there that is going to benefit you related to learning C, even for a simple game like this. Uh, more than realized I was I was alias Celeste lol yeah so uh, I don't know let's like look at what curl, kernel D is doing I have no idea what color D is doing let's go look so uh, what process is that what process with color D well I was going to show you a way to inspect the color D process so we're going to go look at um, here it goes it's, it's process 1259 so we can S trace S -A S trace dash is it L boy it's been a long time uh, no, I think it's dash P. Can I attach a process? Uh, check details. Uh, try again. Oh, right. Sudo. Uh, so here we go. So you see what it's doing? It's it's actually not doing anything. It's sitting there waiting. Uh, STD, ST, STL2 alone provides most of the abstractions and cross-platform stuff as of what Allegro does. We can actually probably do this stuff without Allegro, but... If, uh, VMT, maybe maybe that's something that you could do in advance too. You're another one of our advanced C poor people. I would love to alter that thing and not use Allegro framework and actually. But if we use STL2, we'd have to write our own collisions and stuff probably. Um, so I, I so I would not learn Rust at the same time if that's what you're asking. No, I would not do that. I would stick with C first and then I'd do the other one. 
C++ is a totally, totally different language. Absolutely different language. It's not even close to C. It is. Yeah. Mm. Thanks for the follow. Obviously, this process is pretty boring. It's not doing anything interesting. But it's, you'll 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 get the point. We'll do we'll do system calls later. My point I'm trying to make is learning C will have value beyond making code in C. If you try to decide to use, if you're trying to make a decision about whether you should learn C or not, and your decision is based entirely on am I going to make games in this or am I going to make anything in this, then you're doing it wrong because there's so many other things you're going to use that relate to C. When you're looking through, uh, you know, if you're a hacker, you're going to look through crash dumps. If you're, if you're, if you're looking, you know, if you're looking at trying to debug a system or see what these applications do, you're going to be using S traces. And the, the language of that is C. So, understanding it is, is is it's one of the reasons you should learn go to do cloud native kubernetes stuff because all of that those source codes are written in go so you can understand what the things are doing even if the documentation sucks so it's worth learning even if it's in a fun way uh so man syscalls uh yeah yeah there we go and uh, the system calls fundamental interface between an application and a linux kernel uh and there's something new called ebnf for doing i mean all this stuff is going to become less abstract to you and you're going to get an understanding of a lot more plus you're going to be able to actually write your own linux extensions you can make your own linux driver in c think about that for a second you could design your own device order it from china get it in a package from dhl and write your own device drivers for that thing in c and and assembly that's amazing power that's the kind of power that i really want it's like one of the powers, you know, it's like, I was going to quote Mr. Robot, but I'm not going to. Would you recommend Perl Python for system administration? Uh, bash. So I don't know rest for now. I'm focused on C, so I can work at Ben Eater's uh, 60. <laughs> nice. Uh, it's going to be lit. I don't know about that. The the Rust Fire OS. And we're going to, we're going to see it. We'll see how, how well it turns out. I'm, look, I'm not, I'm, I'm just wait and see. <laughs> how many more puns can i make how many <laughs> I, I, that you know what that needs to be a t-shirt that needs to be a t-shirt rust blah 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 rust blah 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 rust blah 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 rust blah 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 i'm gonna wait and see <laughs> because c's already there's like literally trillions of lines of c code running the world right now so, anyway, understanding C is essential. Using Docker, uh, you're going to make your own distro. You should. You should do Linux from scratch. Do it. I'm not, I'm not even kidding. You should make your own distro. It's actually really fun. I want to try it myself again. There's just not enough time, right? Um, all right, but this is really fun. I'm actually really enjoying this more than Advent. Did I say that? I didn't mean to say that. I came out anyway. It's the brandy. Cheers. I think I'm going to make Brandy a, re a required part of this class, for me anyway. <laughs> Merry Happy <heaven> Christmas. <laughs> All right. C is a language for small, fast programs. Uh, C is designed to create small, fast programs. It's low. You cannot get smaller than C besides assembly. That's it. There's C and assembly. You physically cannot make a program smaller in any way, except for C and assembly. C language is designed to create small, fast programs. It's lower, it's lower level than most other languages. That means it creates code that's a lot closer to what the machine really understands. Uh, the way C works. Uh, Merry Christmas, y'all! Fil you filthy animal! Uh, computers. <laughs> uh, computers really only understand one language: machine code. Uh, which we should learn. We should learn machine code at one point too. A binary stream of ones and zeros. You can write your C code into machine code with the aid of a compiler. Most of you know this already. So there's our code. Hey, should we do it? Let's do it. All right, you're supposed to have Docker already. So I have Docker already and by my alias. I'm going to show you my alias. It's called run. See that? Okay. I'm actually going to make a workspace container for this uh, really quickly. Uh, I wonder, my workspace containers are already built on Ubuntu, so I, I might need to use a coding container. You know what? I'm going to do the Docker commands out longhand because uh, reasons. I need to learn my Docker commands again, longhand. So let's do that. Let's do Docker 
yeah, I'm gonna have to make a pro. I'm gonna, you know what? We're gonna have to make a script to set up our container to use GCC. Hey VMT, which GCC did I use? Which GCC should we use? You guys know more than us. Kubernetes still it will not involve. Fuck that, Frank. Bite your tongue. Bite your tongue, 10x programmer whose name is Frank. Mm. We're gonna go for another half an hour because this is our first one. It's like it's like when they have like a like a pilot, you know, move, show. I tune in for C. I just and and I've yet to see any C. Oh come on, Jalopy, we have to set up our environment. There are trolls in our midst, good friends of mine. But bite your thumb. I need a question. I have a question. Which GC do we use? GCC eleven point one or C length twelve? Shrug. Latest version of GCC. I don't know what that is. All right, what is the latest, lastest version of GCC? Uh, GCC 11.2, so there, you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go, we're gonna go look at Docker and find it. There's GCC 8, 7, 9. Uh, I wanna find Conan. Conan, where are you? Uh, what book are you working from? Head for C. Hello, where you been? All the extra stuff has nothing to do with C. Bullshit. <laughs> you have to have a compiler. The book says, go get a compiler. Dude, if you're not writing C inside of a container, do it your own way. That's fine. That's what we're doing. And thank you for joining us late. Uh, so here we go. GCC 10 looks pretty new. Let's just find another one. We have to find a good one. We have to find a good version of GCC that's going to... We Obviously, pretty much any of these will work, but, you know, I want to get... Ooh, Lex, has, there's an ARM. An ARM one. So we have to get a good one. I want to get a good container. And I am not installing GCC, and I'm not telling them how to install GCC. We're just going to grab a container. Uh, take a, a lot of not to chime in. Yeah, oh, I know you're going to chime in a lot because you think that you can code C without a container. And there's a lot of people who think that, but I think the modern method is to use containers for development. C Lang 11, ugh, I don't know if I want to do that. No, I mean, I don't know. What? There's no GCC 49. That's got to be 4.9. That's got to be 4.9. GCC, 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 GCC. Uh, seven, seven, eight, eight, nine, nine, ten. GCC on Ubuntu. That's probably fine. Oh, GCC eleven on Ubuntu. Let's do that. GCC, GCC. <laughs> I think we're gonna go GCC eleven on Ubuntu sixteen, with no Jenkins. This one looks like the one updated nine nine days ago. That's pretty fresh. Uh, too many K. Jenkins. This has Jenkins on it. We're not gonna be using Jenkins. Got 2.4k downloads. That's a really popular one. Uh, GC all the way. <laughs> Here we go. This is it. So I I am going to try this. You can't make me not. So it's now been saved. Here. There you go. There's a command. If you have Docker installed, this is what we're going to do our development. You can do it your own way. If you know how to do it a different way, this is how I'm doing it. We're going to pull Conan IO. Uh, right. One node open. <laughs> oh my God. GCD's nuts. Nuts is a Christmas topic. Mm. Oh, what fun. <laughs> container. Hey, hey, using one liner without Docker on Linux app, get install build essential. Not doing it. Not doing it. That's not modern development. If you if you want to be an old school old fart and like install your dependencies on a local Linux machine and then pray to God you don't fuck something up or need something else, go for it. I don't want to do that. I want to use modern development practices, which are using a container for your development. So, but you can do that if you want. That's your prerogative. It doesn't say how to get it. It just says get it. And I'm telling you how I'm getting it. Uh, <laughs> dunking on those boomers. So... There's lots of ways. I'm not going to tell you what to do. The book says get GCC. Figure it out. I'm going to use containers because that's the modern way. 
So I now have a Docker container and I'm going to put a little script together to start up my Docker container and to mount uh, a persistent uh, volume uh, so that I all of my code gets saved someplace. Now, I actually don't need to do that too much because, I mean, I set up, set up workspace containers in another way, uh, but we're going to go ahead and do that. Uh, I am an old fart trying to be cool and hip and stay employed. <laughs> If you don't know how to develop with a development container today, get good luck getting a job. That's all I have to say. There's probably somebody out there who will hire you, but no. All right, so we've got our repo. Uh, we just need a, a, a script to do this. And it's probably We should probably build a Docker file and build our own container image. Not going to do that yet because I'm already getting shit about not coding C. So we're going to we're gonna go ahead and start this image and add a persistent volume. And I need to remember my Docker commands. That's one of the reasons I want to do this. So we're going to do, uh, let's go ahead and write a shell script for this. Again, if you don't know shell, sucks to be you. Uh, we covered it elsewhere. Um, and I'm trying to decide whether I want to do run or not. Yeah, let's do that. Run, schmucks, run. Ah, that's just schmod plus x. Uh, run, uh, I'm going to use bash just by default. You could use POSIX if you want. Uh, and then we can just rename it to how to use Docker and it won't be false advertising. It's not false advertising. It's <sighs> the book says get GCC. I don't know. Do you have GCC installed? <laughs> um, all right. Docker, uh, run. Yeah. Docker run dash it. Um, Conan Ubuntu 6.4. Yeah. All right. So there we are. We have a container. All right. Now, the reason I'm telling you we need to make a persistent, and I'm just going to show you why. So we actually have it here. We have a GCC now. Good, right? And now we can actually write code. So let's write that Hello World program since everyone's giving me shit. All right, let's write this. Let's write hello world. Put S, which you probably would never use, right? Uh, how's it going, seven? So we're going to go here. We're going to say, so I'm using VI. If you're not using VI, you install Emacs, install whatever you want. If you're going to use VS Code, do it some other way. I don't know how to even use containers with VS Code. I've never done it. So if you want to do it, fine. This is, I'm not doing it that way. Uh, so... <laughs> It's not VMT. At least put a sarcastic emote on that. People are gonna, they're gonna. There's beginners here. Oh my god. Oh my god. Mount your working directory. There you go. I don't know how to do it with VS Code. Mind's eye. You should probably do a stream on how to do with that. Not using NVim. Use whatever the fuck you want. Guess what's on here? VI. It's actually not on here. What? Is there only Vim on here? You know what? That's interesting. Hmm. Looks like I'm gonna have to look like I'm gonna have to make my first Docker file. You're gonna give me shit about this. So you have to install them. Because honestly, you don't really don't do this. You mount your directory into it. Which nano. No. Nope. It's I like that they did that. They didn't take sides. <laughs> they didn't take sides. You need the you need the mount. Thank you, Mind's Eye. Weird shed. Nope. No, nope. you gotta do your own. I I'm doing a Docker file right away. I'm doing a Docker file. Sue me, I don't give a shit. Uh from boom. Uh run sudo I didn't say it was a one liner. Sudo apt install. Yep, we're back to the Docker file. If you want to do it without a Docker file, fine. Just don't give me shit about it because I am going to have something that works. Sudo apt, actually apt get. I I don't remember my Docker files honestly. CD workspace. I have to go look up my Docker files so that I can go faster. Uh, yes, we need all this stuff. Yes. Uh 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 uh. 
do 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 PPP. If you're lost, I'm sorry. Get yourself a Docker file. Uh, what are we gonna call this? We're gonna call this. Uh, what are we gonna call this? We call this lab. Um, no, we call it. What are we calling it? Head for C. I believe in setting up a proper environment before you start fucking around. If you don't believe in that, fine. Do whatever the fuck you want. Don't give me shit. Um. <laughs> Are just teasing. I know, I know you're teasing. It's just annoying. <laughs> what do we call this thing anyway? I don't, I don't remember what I called my repo. First, first project. Okay. Uh, do your front end non-interactive. Yes, minimize. If you don't know Docker files, this is not the place to learn it. I'm just saying. We're upgrade install. I'm gonna go get app utilities build essential. Don't need that software properties. We might need some of these later. Um, build essentials already going to be there. I swear to God, software properties common should be there. I'll add them back if I need them. HTTPS transport. We're not going to be doing any, any anything with web. It's not going to need that. Search not going to need it. Man pages. Eh, why not? Uh, save certificates. No, we're not. We're not. Will you give me a second here? We're not going to use curl. We're not going to use curl. We're not going to use any of this. We're going to use the pet core PPA stuff. Get rid of this. Get update here. Um, what What is the CLI GitHub package? Which one? What is in that? PPA core, core Git. Oh, it's the core Git PPA. If we want to put Git on here. Actually, we need that if we're going to put Git. We need that for Git, actually. Yeah, yeah we need that. We need, uh, so Vim, I don't want, I don't, I guess... Tmux. I I don't I don't need Tmux. I don't need dialog. I don't need Perl, Python. I'm gonna need well. I mean, there's two ways to do this. One of the ways is we could use it to do the comp compilation. The other one is to do it uh, GDB. Yeah. I don't know how much of this I'm gonna actually need in this container, but I'm gonna go ahead and put it in here anyway. So hi. Hi. What's up? Oh, okay. I have to. I have to. I have to stop talking for a second. Give me a second. All right, she's back. That's my wife. Um, I don't know how much of this we need. Um, I tend to not want it unless we need it. So I'm going to delete all of it. We're going to need Git and all that stuff, but I, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to build it all up. Uh, I don't, I don't want to build my own container out of this just for this project. Are you still talking to me? Okay, um, so, uh, do, 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 we can just install, we don't have to install anything, we can just install, we can just install, uh, Vim. Yep, we can just install Vim, what's that? App get install, I don't even know if I need app utils in MandyB, I don't really need it, let's just do Vim. Uh, get rid of all this. Workspace container, I don't need, don't need this. Don't need any of that. Don't need the entry point. Um, we're going to keep the same entry point. Yeah. All right. That's it. We don't need anything fancy there. Um, then we get to install Docker so you can develop and see. Exactly. I think 
I think you should do that. Look, if you want to install Arch from scratch and spend two weeks reading the wiki and re-image your system, fine. I don't. <laughs> uh, or Gen 2. So, it's supposed to, Okay. Should we do it? Should we do it the easy way? I already have... How many of you have... The First of all, people don't even have Linux installed. We're assuming they have Linux. What are we assuming they have? How did they get Linux in the first place? Are they running a container? What do they have? Right? I mean, we can do this with just ECC if you want. I saw Flat Night. You guys are such dicks. I... <laughs> but you're not wrong. Okay, so... Fine. It's keeping them so entertained by stuff. I okay. I have a I have a legitimate question. I have a legitimate question for you, smart asses. What do we tell a twelve year old beginner who has never used UCC and doesn't have Linux installed? We do. I guess we assume they have Linux already, right? We assume they have Linux. Do we tell them to use MinGW or all that stuff that's in the book? I don't think they should use this stuff in the book. You know? You think it's the best way? Okay. Because I don't... Uh, I'll tell you I'll tell you what you don't tell them. They install Docker to write a C program. I crashed my comment. <laughs> I don't know what we're assuming. We're assuming... Look, we're assuming they have a Linux command line. That is assuming a lot. Right? And we already covered this and other stuff. We're supposed to have already covered... Uh, bash POSIX and shell native. This this is supposed to cover getting a bash shell. They're supposed to already know that. And and when I do this, when I do this, WSL is a thing, but WSL sucks. WSL suck f. Um, it, it for a lot of this stuff. Uh, so yeah, I guess we assume that you have bash shell, and who cares, right? It doesn't have to be Docker. Uh, you can file C. Um, uh, still don't know bash. I've been asking you about bash for the past year now. What about, about how to learn bash? We just need a shell. Honestly, we don't even need to use a lot of bash shell stuff. All right. Uh, it's doo-doo. <laughs> yes. It's horrible. I hate it. So search T TLCL. Shut up. Oh, the next command line. I see. Yeah. No, it's not. It's not as bad as that. But I think I think having an actual Linux, you know, container that you control is is more valuable. More valuable. So this. So I'm gonna. I mean, all this the smart alecness aside, everyone. I I am doing this based on the fact that I'm assuming they learned Bash, POSIX, Shell, Native, and learning learning Linux and learn how to do Go and Python development the same way that I did. And currently, that requires nothing more than Docker, Docker desktop or, or a Docker desktop of some kind. If you want to do a VM or you want to do whatever, you assuming you have it, okay? So, so let's do that. Um, and, 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 and the whole Docker file thing is just to keep them from, you know, having to, to do their thing. I don't even... See, this is another reason I need to do this. My Docker commands are totally rusty now. I haven't made a new Docker file in a long time. Uh, yes, you can, but I don't know why you would. Docker is a VM, yeah. Docker desktop is a VM. It absolutely is. I know. It's just a lot lighter weight VM um, than VMware. So, so yeah. I mean, we could run Kima. There's a million things. I don't, I don't want to go down that rough, that path. Oh, what the fuck? Add layer of what the fuck am I doing? Yeah. Um, you can run to Docker, Docker. I mean, okay, so let's assume you have a Linux command line, period, right? Uh, we can use the Docker stuff later, but let's say you got yourself on a Linux command line. That's it. And I'll work on the other stuff already. Let's actually write our program because I want to go end. I want to end by 930 because these people are going to get pissed. So uh, we're assuming you have a command line. I don't give a shit how you get to the Linux command line. I don't give a shit how you get GCC installed. The book says get GC installed, GCC installed. And it gives you some ideas about how to do it that are ancient. If, if you follow the methods that they tell you with MinGW and all that stuff, just know that you're following something that we used to do, you know, in the, the, the 1990s wants its way of doing Linux back. And nobody does that anymore. 
And so that's actually one bad thing about the book is how dated it is on that particular point. And I'm trying to update your skills so that you're using containers or a VM uh, uh, instead. But uh, you should have already done that uh, in other learning someplace else. So I'm going to skip that. I'm going to assume you have GCC. Uh, this Docker work here. There is a Docker OS and you can install Docker libraries. And stuff like that. I don't know. Uh, it's pretty... The, the book itself is pretty ancient, yeah. But it's not like, I don't think it's really ancient. Um, I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't have a copyright stuff in the beginning of this one. I can't see it anyway, if it does. Um, so, so let's do this. We're going to write this program. Um, we're going to write that program. You ready? All right. So we're going to write the program. I'm using VI. Use whatever the fuck you want. All right. So VI... Uh, I don't know. We're going to say hello.c and God, I don't remember. I'm doing shebang line. Can you believe that? Uh, include, was it stud? I owe not Let's see how much I can remember. Uh, I can't remember. No, int. God, it's been so long. It's been so long. Put s. Seriously, it has been so long. I'm not going to remember any of it. I didn't remember my Perl the other day. I was so embarrassed. Hello, world. Um, and you have to use uh, double quotes because single quotes mean something else. Printf, hello, world. Yeah, don't get me started on that. Yeah. I see all the time. Never used put this in my life. Yeah, I know. That's the thing. It's like, why would you use it? Um, and it has a return code too, right? Also, that goes down here. I'm going to force myself to do that. Let me see if that'll compile. All right. So, GCC dash, uh, uh, hello dash, oh, hello. Now, I could have done, yay, my program works. Put S apparently has a line return in it. I didn't know that. I don't use it either very much. I see. I don't know. If, is Put S safe? This is the problem. I don't know if it's if it's because it's not bounded. Put S apparently has a has a thing at the end. It has a new line. All right. So now there's another way to do this. We haven't got onto yet, but you can do this. You can do make hello, and it will make it. Make has already got an internal rule to do this kind of shit. So you can do make hello and it'll just make it. it uses CC, which is alias to GCC in this case, and you get your hello there. So this is a legit time to use make if you want to. Now they're teaching you GCC because they want you to do this, but those rules are all set up in another language called make, which is specifically designed for C originally. Uh, to build all of the stuff that goes into a, a single program, which is usually lots of individually compiled libraries that get linked together into a big thing, or not. Sometimes they're distributed separate from the other piece that depends on them being there. It's called dynamic linking. Uh, and all the original C code in the world was written that way because because we had to watch out for memory and all kinds of other problems, disk size and everything. And so, there, you know, you would never have a static binary that had everything included in it redundantly and kind of wastefully, right? Uh, but Go and, and Rust and all those languages, modern languages, stuff all that shit in one binary so that it can run anywhere. It doesn't have to have all of those dependent compiled libraries on the system. So I, I kind of jumped ahead there, but that's, that's what's going on with the C stuff. Uh, something I don't understand, which is apparently C. Um, just the preface, not, not Linux using modern. There are many programmers who had a new line after a statement. Uh, what's the .h? That's a header file. Uh huh. I just call it Linux style because the Linux source code uses that style. Don't know what it's actually called. What's a put s? A put s is a is a function. So, but they're going to get to that. So let's go. How far are we? So we have the source code. The way C works, computers really only understand one language, machine code. Here is the, the C code. And then here is the compiler. And then here's the binary code. And if you want to see the binary code, you can actually look at it. You can go VI, hello, and you can look at the binary code. Or if you want to actually see it in binary code, what is it? Hex, hex dump? Guys, what is it? What's the, what's the cool one these days? 
is it is it text dump? There you go. There's your binary code. It's not binary. It's it's hexadecimal, but it's pretty damn close. Um, this is the actual ones and zeros of the thing represented in, in hexadecimal, um, which you should know by now if you've gotten this far along. So can't wait till we search for functions using man pages. Yeah, man put s. There you go. So everything in C is documented in Linux by default. That's why I wanted to install the man pages in my Docker container. Because people have been coding in C since the dawn of time, literally. I mean, C was invented to create the Unix operating system. That's why it was made. Um, so here we go. I mean, the fun fact, the first Unix operating system was entirely written in assembly. The very first one. And then they wrote C, Richie and the gang wrote C to make uh, the next version of Unix. You can go watch all about that at Bell Labs. It's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. Um, on Arch, to sell man pages. Yes. You have to install them. If you're going to, you got to get the man pages. Those redundant zeros. Yeah. <laughs> Can't wait till we search. Yes. So this tells you how, you know, how to use it. Uh, you're going to be doing this. This is much faster. Man pages are much faster than going out to the internet. Um, you can go out to the internet if you want, but you know, I don't remember what put it. So oh, here we go. It's actually a man page on that, right? And the man pages on the C stuff are pretty damn, uh, exhaustive. You know, they, they give you a lot of code, a lot of information about that. Is the biggest coin? I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. Smart Alex. Look at all those empty. You're right. Look at all that empty space in there. Look at all that. It's like totally empty. I wonder if it's because it's 64 bit. I bet it is. I bet all that empty extra space is because it's 64 bit. If you know the syntax. Yes. For that, that takes no input or produces a copy of its own source code. So, oh, that's a quine? Did not know that was the name of it. Today I learned. I, I'm putting that in my information. Sorry. A quine is a computer, is a program that that processes a copy of its own source code as its only output. That um, process, it's, I don't know, own source. Today I learned coin. I have to do this. This is part of this is the W part of RDBX. So when I learn random things, I write them down. Uh, it takes no input and produces um, a copy of its own source as the only output. Today, I did I get that right? Coin. And it's only have nice. Oh, and we have a reference link. Thank you, everybody. Kyle, thank you for that. I encourage you to take notes about random things. I use the Zettelkasten approach, but you can use whatever you want. Um, and now I have that in my notes. All right, so clear. People think it takes me too long to do shit, but I'm learning along the way. So, so there. Uh, I don't need run right now. I'm going to do that later. So, you know, I don't even know if we're going to need a lot of the Docker file stuff for now. I'm going to keep it here. But so we wrote our first C program. You might need to do dot slash hello, of course. Um, let's go back to the code. We are over by two minutes. So let's finish this particular chapter and go on. Do you know uh, the 128 language client? It outputs the first source code after going through 128 other languages. Did not know that. Super interesting. Super interesting. Uh, I'm going to add that to my related section. Thank you for all these references. I can go back and look at. Um, shut up, Jalopy. Oh, my God. Smart Alex. Smart Alex. That's what you get with C programmers. By the way, who is the one warning us about the C, the C, the C community? They said, be very careful before you ask any questions in the C community because they're a bunch of assholes. 
<laughs> Somebody literally, was it Mind's Eye? I think it was Mind's Eye. Mind's Eye. So, my, <laughs> it was VMT. <laughs> VMT is like, be careful. So, so you might you might think that all these trolls up here in Sea Land right now in our little community here are hard to take, but this is no, no, this is. This is this is the, this is the prep for you before you go ask a question in Complang C and on a news group someplace or an IRC equivalent, <laughs> because you get fucking roasted, because they they are not nice people. <laughs> C coders are not nice people. They're not. They're not. They're they're really talented and they're intelligent usually, and they they're horrible people. <laughs> they are. Why do you think I picked for head for C? Because it's like so nice and happy. Yeah. Compared to Elixir, which is actually a pretty friendly community. Exactly. Elixir or Haskell. Haskell's got a great community. Rust actually has a pretty friendly community unless you go against their dogma. All right, here we go. Would that include Linus? Oh, yeah, I would. One of them is Brainfuck? Seriously? Okay, we're not learning Brainfuck today. Nope. Uh, C is used where speed space blah, blah, blah. We that. there are three C standards at the time of this writing that you may stumble across ANSI C is from the late 1980s Doom was written in ANSI C uh, and it was the oldest code a lot of things were fixed in C99 it's funny they skipped C89 completely uh, you wrote an MIRC script and generated brain fuck oh my god uh, I used to make C code cringe <laughs> I think it is, is even an automatic GitHub test uh, dumb people equals Twitter. <laughs> and so I've been, I'm having way too much fun reading the chat. I got to stop doing that because there's a lot of great stuff in there. Uh, and some cool new language features are added in the current standard. C11 released in 2011. Uh, the difference between the different versions aren't huge and we'll point them out along the way. So I think we're going to be using C11 um, even though C99 is perfectly fine. I, I coded the original K&R style. <laughs> Anybody else who doesn't <laughs> is... A plebe who should not exist. There should not have been born in Linus Torvald's words. Um, uh, the water bit, how's it going? Which is an interesting challenge. Generate the minimal VF program to generate some text. Return day post me. Sharpen your pencil. Oh God. To guess what each of these code fragments does. Deciphering things. I'm actually going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to put this in my readme because I it said to do the exercises. I'm going to do them. I'm going to do them. Get started with C. Uh, this is chapter one, right? Chapter uh, one notes. All right. So what do you think the first one does? Uh, I'm writing a comma mark markdown, by the way. Look at variables. Oh, God. No, I've had this book for a long time. I bought it and everything. It's called uh, it's called Head for C, and we're going to work through it for fun. And again, this is supposed to be fun for y'all to do, so that's why I want to go through it. Um, uh, int, int card equals int card count. What do you think this does? What do you think this does? Int card count equals 11. Well, I happen to know what it does. It assigns, it assigns uh, the number 11 to... The variable uh, card count. Now I happen to know already, so that's kind of cheating. Uh, if card count, but maybe some of you are coming across this and you want to follow along. If card count is greater than ten, actually we need to write some other stuff. If we're gonna like chapter zero. I need to write a chapter zero stuff. Chapter uh, zero. Uh, get uh, Linux. Let's see. Uh, get on a Linux. Uh, bash uh, command line uh, uh, I chose to uh, just use my uh, pop OS system uh, desktop uh, uh, which already has GCC installed uh, but I also started um, making a docker container uh, to 
uh, to keep with uh, modern development practices. All right, I'm just putting, again, this is a W in RWX. I'm writing notes here, and so other people can follow along, etc. cetera. Uh, oh, what version of GCC I have? What do I have? I have 10.3, that's not bad. Uh, 10.3. All right. Okay, so let's answer the rest of these questions. We'll be done. Uh, if card if card count is greater than ten, what's the link to a screenshot of what? Raise your hand if your count on your fingers is binary. Lol. <laughs> um, install Docker. Install Docker. You know what? I'm fucking tired of you. All right. If if card if card count is greater than ten. Then what? Then print it. Put S, the deck is hot, increase the bed. All right. Uh, checks uh, the value value of card count uh, to see. I mean, this is lame. Then whatever. Greater than 10. Why do I have the impression that I should be writing this code right now? I'm going to write it. I'm going to write this code. Uh, I wrote all this code out in a file and ran it first, then answered the questions. You can decide how you want to go through it. I'm, I'm trying to do this fast because this is like a little bit remedial. It's kind of a lot of bit remedial. Eleven louder than ten. <laughs> Did it? <laughs> do 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 do. All right. So what are we gonna do here? Is we gonna do? Wait. What is? What is? What are we gonna name that other program? What are we gonna name it? Card count. Assume the name shorter than twenty characters. Boyfriend's name. These are like multiple programs. Oh, let's say, let's do the bet. Let's do a bet. Yeah. Bet.c. This is good. Uh, include stud, stud io. Dot, do you still need the dot h? You do, right? I mean, I, I know that's changed over time. Yeah. But instead of, okay, we're going to do. Wait, um, what was it? Card count? Uh, int card count. Count equals 11, semicolon. If card count. I mean, this is good for me. It does not. Thanks to VMT. If card count is greater than 10. And then they don't have brackets, which I find very annoying. Also, single tab indent, which is also a problem, right? Why do I have single tab indent in my C? Is it a tab? What's the K&R version? Tabs or spaces? <laughs> What's the tab? It, de it, didn't, it didn't explain it. It's just use it. Stud.io gives you print and put S and stuff like that. That's why. They're, they haven't explained anything yet. I'm just coding it because I'm because reasons um I, i'm too lazy to type all that so because i know exactly what it does so let's do that make bet uh-oh error will robinson i just got done watching the series I, i'm so sorry uh why is that a problem Why is that a problem? Good morning. Is this speaking computer layers? Well, yeah. Hi, hi, that, that dude. That dude. That dude. That dude. Como se va? Um, this is my job. So we're just having fun. What? I, is this the reason? 
this is gonna be so embarrassing because my C is fucking in the toilet. Make wait, wrong thing. Make bet. Is there no is wait a second. Did I Oh <laughs> I'm glad I can provide entertainment for y'all. I'm glad I am glad I can entertain you with my complete idiocy. I mean, I'm going to be the moron of, you know, that's why I didn't get indentation right either. It's like, what the fuck are you trying to do? This isn't C. Not Python. <laughs> To all of those who just learned something from my idiocy and they're laughing at me, I'm here for you. Python. <laughs> Make bet. It works now. <laughs> the deck is hot. Increase the bet. Oh, that's very nice. Thank you. All right, so I'm gonna forget shit, and because I I haven't written this forever, it's 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 kind of humbling for me, and I God knows I need humble humility. So so let's do this. Let's do this next one. I like this because it's like three little programs. You know, we can like do them like tiny little programs. Let's do this one. What, what we're gonna call this one? Int c equals ten. Was c equals greater than ten. I must not write coding class. Lull. So we're gonna do our loop. We don't know what this stuff is doing yet. We're gonna learn it later, but we're gonna do it. So I'm gonna read this as a challenge. I want to make a loop that loops 10 times and says, I must not write code in class. And it does C equals C minus one, which I know we can shortcut that shit. All right, we're gonna do another one. Uh, uh, bad boy does C. <laughs> Again, repetition, right? Include Include stud io.h to get all the functions we need for printing. Uh, and then we do int main because I forgot. Because I'm going to tell me. And then we get, now I've indented right now. We're going to say, so int c. Do I have to, do I have to declare, declare it? I do, right? I have to give it an initial value. You can't just say, hey, I'm going to use it because this isn't Python, right? C equals 10. Why did they put it? Oh, they're doing it. They're decrementing. I see. Get it? Well, see, well, C is greater than zero. Can be uninitialized. I was going to say, yeah, I might go. Like writing a bug, but you remember how to do it eventually. I'll get there. It's been a, it's been a long time. Uh, while C is less than zero, uh, put us, um, uh, I must write more C in class. There, so there. So, and I know it says C equals C minus one, but I'm almost positive. Is there a linter here? No linter, right? Fuck. I need to activate a linter in VI. I must that code minus. All right, make bad boy. Damn it. Oh, fucking semicolons. I need to get a lantern in my VI. Shut up. Is she ceiling tight as a good lantern? I have no lantern. I have no lantern. There is only Zool. There is only Zool. There is no Dana, only Zool. Where's my Zool? There is no Dana, only Zool. <laughs> uh, let rolling the code and now you want to let it back up again. This is a great movie. That was a really good one. Was it on yesterday? All right, so make bad boy. Make my make this bad boy. What the fuck? No completion for make? Holy shit, make. Holy shit, make. All right. 
bad boy. Ten times nice. Who are you gonna call? <gasps> v boy. I am. I don't know what that means, but okay. Is that one of the people that went to prison for like pissing on our nation's capital? Um. So assume a shorter name than twenty characters. I'm actually having fun writing C code. Is a break dancer? I did not know that. Assume name shorter than 20 characters. Dear John, your history. What the fuck? Sort of passive aggressive. All right, I'm going to do it again. This is fun because it's it's just, you know, I you know what? If this is your first red time writing C, that's good practice. So let's do another one. Let's say Adios. How about that? I'm making a, a program called Adios. Adios. Dot, I keep thinking I have to do that because I'm going to schmod it, but I don't need to. Adios. Dot C. Adios. I almost type a shebang line every time because I'm so used to it. Studio. Not H. Just repetition is good for me. In main. Uh, and then what? What are we doing? Assume name shorter than 20 characters. All right. We're going to write a comment. Oh, my God. Um, you can't do that. Is that allowed? Assume name shorter than 20 characters. Um, this makes an exit code. Put S. Uh, just thing. Int void main. We're, we're, we're being... I don't think that is. Uh, we're, we're doing comments. This is all covered in the official docs. We're just kind of just having fun with these examples. These examples are not meant to be written. Adios testing. So apparently you can use these kind of comments now. Thank God. Uh, ScanF is only deprecated Microsoft. Oh, look at those bits. Thank you for that. Uh what shall we do next? My main. So we got a program there going on. Put S. Uh, deprecation. I don't know. I don't know about that one. So. So what are we gonna do here? We got another thing. Um, we're gonna we're gonna they're gonna tell us what all this stuff means later. So don't panic if you don't know what it is right i happen to know what it is it's a good reminder for me i love that you can use uh that kind of comment now not the other kind so we just proved it because that compiled that compiled so a character character so we're gonna we're gonna make a character array this is a string otherwise known as a string called x so char uh x is 10 characters long. Uh, put us. Uh, uh, enter. X wife's name. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Don't forget the semicolon. Uh, and then what? Scanf. Ooh, scanf. This is the one that's going to. No, I refuse to use scanf. I will not use Scanf. I, wait a second. I could be wrong. Is Scanf bounded by how big the thing is you're scanning? Aren't we supposed to do uh, scan? What is it? The, the alternative that's safer that has a bio, that has a buffer. Not FKSS. No, I Scanf. Like, I don't think scanf is, is safe. Not drop table. I don't think scanf is safe. I think scanf is safe because the boundary is defined. I I, I have to do some research right here. I, I don't want to teach anybody bad C practices where they do memory before. A lot of these, like sprintf and stuff like that, they have sprint nf, and they, they have a boundary on them, and they are considered the safe versions. And I don't know if that has changed in the last... 15 years it's actually longer than that god 20 years shit when was the last time i coded c code 
it was before I started skill stack. I, I mean, I did a little at skill stack, but it was just silly fun stuff. So like significant C code, I was still at IBM. So that had to have been 2010 or before. And the fork bomb project I did was, I'm going to say 2000 and I was still happily married. So it wasn't 2000, 2007. No, 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 no. I had been remarried. It was 2014. It was 2014. Okay, that's good. I had to figure that out. 2014, I had been remarried. I did that in the new house. That's right. That's 2014. I was actually still running Skillstack and working at IBM at the same time. So that was, that was 2013, 2013, All right. I'm just trying to, that was like 10 years ago, half, almost 10 years ago. Scan if, uh, if you have a buffer, will save you a 60 byte buffer. Thank you, Dandy. Uh, scan if is unsafe and not deprecated by Microsoft. Uh, it just marked as unsafe. Yeah, but you can still use it. This is one of the reasons I'm afraid of this. Uh, in different ways, it's just, just the unsafe standard. Yeah. And, and that's why, that, that's why I, look, to to all you pedantic C people out there, I'm going to call on you for something while we're doing this. I want you to tell me when the book has something that is unsafe. Okay? I'm going to actually search for all the functions as we use them, and I want to make sure. But this is where the, the problem with C, uh, all the bugs that are in C and all this. Uh, I look, it's going to be like every fucking line. I know. Everything in C is unsafe. I know. But... There are safe versions of this. You can bind that. You can bound this. I know you can do it. I know there's safe ways to do it. And I want to do the safe way. To which functions are safe. Yeah, it actually would be. It's C. Yes. Um. Uh, hey, seashell on the seashore. Thank you. Let's cover that. Um, I read somewhere that scanf. I can input a maximum of 15 characters. Is that right? Is it bounded? Uh, Red Summer bounded. It is bounded. It's not 15 characters. Uh, why do you not test it out? Sorry for the language, but uh, let's say RTFM. I haven't heard anything like that. Plus, it would make no sense. Yeah, it's not bounded. I, I I thought it was bounded by the size of the of the thing you're reading in. However, FW can we can impose a limit on the length? See, this is what I was gonna say. If you set your character array, then yeah. Yeah. Or you could do like a length thing. You could have the length of the thing. The above format guarantees that whatever whatever be the length of user input, the data present is the input buffer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Scanf will only read 14 characters. Uh, and hence, even if even even in case of longer input is used, we can prevent the buffer overflow. I, I don't like I don't look. I don't like that the first thing they teach you is how to create a buffer overflow. <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying? This has always been my annoyance with how C is taught. And it's also the major problem I have with K and RC, which does the same thing. K and RC teaches you very unsafe code right out of the get-go. And I'm like, I, I want to stop that. I want to stop that. And put S is fine. Put S is limited because you've got the, the stuff, right? But scan F is not. Uh, they pay no attention to security at all. That's what I'm trying to tell you. They don't care about security. This is the problem. The problem, this is why people ban the standard C library functions from their code. Yeah, it's garbage. It absolutely is. It's totally garbage. And I don't want to learn that. And so if, if we can go through this book, if it takes us an extra month, I don't give a shit. I want to find the safe alternatives to this so I can put annotations in there. And so we can actually rewrite a head for C book that's using safe code. Do you know what I mean? Because because that that is the problem. The problem is not that that it's an unsafe language it is but you know and the rest of people are beating the C, the C community up over the head over this thing and I don't want to do it. learning why it is wrong is actually a good thing I agree I agree but see right now there's no conversation about the right way it's just the wrong way and they don't tell you it's the wrong way even they don't even say it uh, use read and I know we we're going to use read here write your own functions yes uh, even that's what happens if I put more more in the array. My professor would always dodge a question, not answer. It's like they have some ethics agreement not to tell you. Exactly. 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 The thing we to do this would be like 20 lines uh, with all error checks. Yeah. 
All right. I'm going to just say something. Uh, the following is not safe, uh, but, uh, but fix later. <laughs> how about this? How about this? How about for now we keep it simple, but we say fix me. Fix. We're going to, we're going to follow this, but I'm going to say, <laughs> It's a fix me. Fix me and to do are both supported as as things. So I, I mean I refuse to write unsafe code without a warning. I just I just can't do it. I just can't stomach it. And and that's that's why I'm pausing. So in case you're wondering. Let's see that. I, okay, we're gonna go all the way two hours tonight. We're already two hours in. We're almost are we done with chapter one already? It'll take us forever to do this. I think it takes us forever. I don't care. We're learning it. We're learning it. We're gonna see it the right way. So Okay. Oh, look, they did it. Oh, it's not unsafe. It's not unsafe. They bounded it. I didn't read ahead. Yeah, I didn't read ahead. They bounded it. Oh my God. It warms my heart. Authors of Head for C, it warms my heart that you did scan off right. I did, I did not read ahead enough and I apologize for blaming you. I apologize for blaming you. They use scan F properly in a safe way. This is totally safe. So scan F and then they bounded it. They bounded it. And they said, no, we're not just going to keep on reading. We're going to say, I only want to read when they say nine characters. Oh, X is 20. So they're reading exactly 19. Why? Because the last not one, the last uh, character is a null byte and you got to make room for that. So I do S here. Uh, I'm going to do X and we'll put X and that'll read it into X and that will not overflow. If, if, if I didn't do that, I would have a memory buffer overflow and we could hack all kinds of shit in here. Uh, I remember that from college. Mind's Eye said, you should. Mind's Eye is awesome. He's a much better programmer than me for this stuff. What are you talking about? Main is the magic function name that gets entry point in the code. Yes. Null is always zero. It's strings in strings and pointers. Yes, absolutely. This is true. All right, so we're going to do the scan and, and then we're going to print it. Uh, dear so-and-so, your history. Now, this is this is a print F instead of a print NF, but it we don't it doesn't matter because you know we we've already bounded X to 20 into 19. So this is still safe. There is an alternative to this called printnf, which will, which you can give a number which says don't print any more than that amount if it's exceeded. But if you have bounded all your character arrays and read them properly, you should be fine. So maybe do some TypeScript. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, I've seen Mind's Eye a couple times, I think. Uh wall to see the warnings i like that idea should we do that missing return value now in your program yes i know um but we are just trying to copy the other one let's do that i like that idea frank thank you for the reminder i forgot about wall um can we can we set wall as a default environment variable what is for make what's the default environment variables that get added in so if I want to just use make without making a make file, you know what I'm saying? Well, extra error. Just set C flags. Yeah, I was going to say because that's a, I'm trying to keep it simple here, you know? So let's actually put that in our notes. Let's set C flags. I don't have C flags probably set and I need to do that. Um, uh, I'm going to say uh, set C Let's do that. So set uh, uh, I set the C flags uh, so that uh, make works uh, by default with without a make file uh, at the moment. So we're going to do this. We're going to do uh, export. Uh, was it? 
um, C flags equals dash wall dash W extra um, dash W error. And I forgot those. Thank you for reminding me. I knew about wall, but I don't remember the other ones so much. I'm going to put these in my bash there. See, uh, I went ahead and added uh, these to bash RC. <laughs> All right. Bash RC, export. LC call 8C, we'll put it there. Exec bash dash L. Uh, make adios. There we go. Nice. Thank you, everybody. Also, prevent you from compiling your code if you have uncorrect war uncorrected warnings. I love it. Um, thank you so much for that. Ailing all warnings is very helpful later because in C, some pointer operations, which usually crash at one time. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, and the disable warnings I don't want to fix. Yes, 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 yes. Very good. Now, that compiled. That compiled even though I don't have a return. Um... Oh, and now it's gonna it's not gonna blow up. Ex wife. That's not my ex wife. What the fuck? I don't have a return code, so why didn't it why didn't it blow up? It didn't blow up. I thought we were gonna blow up on no return code no recurrence. Print off. Um adios. Um S uh Nice knowing you. And we'll put X here. I probably shouldn't put my X's name here. <laughs> Enter X's name. I won't put my ex-wife. I'll put somebody else. I'll put somebody else. Ah, there's your return code. Oh, semicolon. Semicolon. I fucking hate the semicolon. Adios. Uh oh. Adios. Uh, H. Adios. H. Nice knowing you. <laughs> Shut up with that. Average. Slightly <laughs> average. <laughs> if you might know. All right. So. Uh, a zero for female. <laughs> I want to make a Dungeons and Dragons character generator and see. And we can use the F round for that. All right. So. Yeah. All right. So what do we got here? We got. Uh, what I want to know is why I don't have my return codes here. How come I'm not failing people? Is this, is it acceptable to not have a return code? Return zero is, is defined. You know what I mean? It's obviously working. Right? Uh, it gave me a zero. For <laughs> not conforming. My spec missing return code and UB for the caller. C now includes it. When did that start? Interesting. Okay. I mean, that's is that a C11 thing? Interesting. All right. We're, we're uh, like way over. We went two hours over. Um, sharpen your pencil. Shit. Oh, wow. Here's all the answers. Look at that. I think we're almost done with the exercises. Main function up close. God damn. There's like a lot here. There's a lot here. Uh, we're going to have to end though, but I had fun. I had fun. I had fun. Well, again, we're going to do this tomorrow again. So the same time, same bad channel, all that. Um, and we'll just keep typing this stuff in and practicing compiling and stuff like that. C99 at it. It needs to be playing this system all the time in your career, right? Uh, I mean, you could just change ex ex exchange jobs easily if people started. I, I believe you can change jobs, yes. Yes. But we're, I'm going to go ahead and, 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 uh, and close down the stream now because I, I want to... Does anybody have... C related question before we go. 
Uh, my spec missing return code is UB for the call. Okay. Thanks, BMT. Y'all are fantastic. Thank you for being here and keeping me straight and helping me remember what to do. I'm going to go ahead and commit all this work for tonight. Um, I'm going to put it to do in here, though. Uh, to do. And I'm going to open an issue on this. Uh, add a Docker file for building. Uh, eventually. I mean, I don't need it because I have it. And, I mean, I have a system that does it. Let's run script that uh, mounts X11 sockets. I don't, I don't want to forget that work, but I'm going to go ahead and skip it for now. Uh, I'm going to add everything here. I should probably add a git. Do you think we should commit the binaries with it? Probably not, right? It didn't disappoint. Tabatanes, have you been have you been enjoying it? Because I haven't actually worked through it, but so far I've been really enjoying. It. <laughs> uh, so, do you guys think we should put the binaries in Git? We should probably we should probably put the binaries in Git ignore, and if we're going to include binaries, make an, a proper release. What do you think? I kind of want to go through those things because uh, make a proper release uh, for the binaries. I, I kind of want to use that as an opportunity to learn about how to make a release. Um, I haven't done a lot of release create release creation in GitHub, and that's actually something I've been wanting to do. So I think that's a good idea. Yeah, I, I'm going to go ahead and make a git ignore for mine. Um, git ignore, and in here because uh, when you get it in there, you can't get it out, right? So, adios. What do we got? We got hello. It's going to be a mess, and I'll start making directories and shit, but for right now, I don't need it. Hello, hello, bet, audios, bad boy. Uh, bet, audios, bad boy. Uh, are not committed, yeah. Usually they're not, and that's, I kind of want to get get in on a good practice as we get going. Just use actions. We actually could. There's, yeah, we could use like Jekyll to build it all for us and that kind of stuff. Yeah. So, so let's do that. Let's go ahead and so that now I can go ahead and commit. Uh, I'm going to add actually, I'm going to add dash a that's commit add, and I'm just going to commit that. Um, uh, add work from chapter uh, one on first day on finished. Uh, and I'm just going to do get push. Uh, so here you go. Uh, head first if you want a copy I don't know why I would but <laughs> if you want it there it is so we can go click on that and we can go see the code I made for today and you know I got my notes in here kind of helping me go through it um, yeah that's what she said <laughs> And you'll notice it didn't put any it didn't put any uh, binaries in there because of the git ignore. Even though I didn't oh I did good. So so I give you a star. Did you give me a star? <laughs> he gave my lame ass head for C projects a star. <laughs> nice. All right. So bad boy. This is my bad boy. It's like. I mean, you know, it's it's just for learning. So, I mean, I think I've had a blast tonight doing this. This has been really fun. Uh, you're working on a PR already? <laughs> oh, God. <gasps> oh, y'all are crazy. Y'all are crazy. I am so happy you're here, though. Thank you for going through this with me. I'm actually really enjoying this, and I've been wanting to vet this book, like, in detail for a long time. I've read through the book. Uh, but I haven't ever done any of the code or anything in it. And it, I, I, I checked it out to see if it had some things in it that, that, that I really wanted. When I found out, for example, that they used head, the GCC and they recommended the proper style guidelines and some things like that that I agreed with and, and the fact that they didn't give the answers and the whole approach, I just really have been hopeful that this book was going to be a good one. And God knows if it's not, I'll call it out. I, I'm not the kind of guy to, you know, to rose petal this thing. I, you know, if it's not... 
Uh, oh shit. <laughs> no comments. You're going to make a PR. No comments. Um, so that's all I have for tonight. I'm actually going to, uh, uh, to stop this stream so that we have a, a, a separate stream. Uh, I may actually come back and play another game. Uh, tomorrow I'm supposed to work, but I feel like the holiday has already started for me, even though I have like a week left. Um, I don't know. So I may come back tonight. I don't know if I'm going to be back right away. Um, because I mean, technically I should be going to bed here pretty soon. And, but, but it's been fun. Hopefully you can work through it. The work through the book. I don't know how long it's going to take, but we'll keep working on it. Look forward to see you tomorrow. Same, same time. What do we decide for is going to be the time we're going to do, we're going to do, we're going to do eight o'clock. We're going to do AMA at eight. We're going to do it. We're going to do it at eight, right? We're going to do it at eight o'clock. I think we should do eight, eight to nine, maybe eight to 10. I mean, two hours is a lot of time though. What do you think? Are you going to skip yoga tomorrow? I don't want to skip yoga. We should take rest. I am going to take rest on Sunday, but I, my side is, is healing. It's not completely healed. <sighs> I don't know. I don't know. Tomorrow we're supposed to be doing co-learning all day for Kubernetes. I need to do this. If I don't do this, I'm going to fall behind. I'm not going to be able to make my certificates for Kubernetes. I've got to do the co-learning tomorrow. So, so that's what we're going to be doing. I'm going to go to bed. I'm going to come back and do the co-learning. Um, uh, However, I, I did take a pretty big nap tonight. So, Hugo Rottweiler. Oh, it's like Hugo as in go. Welcome, Hugo Rottweiler. What did we do today? What did we do today? Um, you know what? There's not going to be any time for AMA at night. I'm sorry. I mean, <laughs> somebody was saying, when are we going to have other AMA? And I'm like, I don't, I don't know. I tell you what, I'm going to kill this because we're done. We're off topic now. We're going to skip it on C. I'm going to start streaming right away. We're going to do some more planning and just screwing around and I'll change my status to just chatting. Okay. I'll be right back. <laughs>